So one of the big examples of virus evolution and rabbit evolution yeah. is from an attempt to control the epidemic of rabbits in Australia. I bet you know all about that. I know, I know a little bit about that. So this is, this is a fascinating story and it's a classic example of how you should, you should proceed carefully when you're trying to, to use this. Let, let's start with the Englishman who decided he'd like a few rabbits on his estate, like 1873 or something like that. Is that right? So yeah, I know that the, the rabbits are not native to Australia. Is that right? right? The, the English version or not, and he had just a few, and then within a few years, the whole landscape was covered with rabbits. Rabicate, rabbits replicate as rabbits do. They do. <laughs> and there was nothing to eat them there, you know? That's and, right. Or, or diseases. Um, yeah. So this became a big problem for Australian farmers and Australian, I mean, the, the entire ecosystem of Australia. Right. And so somebody had, had the bright idea to, to bring in a, a pathogen of rabbits, myxoma virus, to kill all the rabbits. Which is prevalent in the populations rabbits came from, or I think it's a different virus, though, isn't it, from the one that was originally for European rabbits? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure of the yeah. details of that, but it's related to a natural pathogen right, of, of rabbits. Right, of rabbits, and so it made sense. This is a virus. Let's these rabbits are causing a lot of ecological damage. Let's bring in a, a something, a natural control agent, a virus to yeah. to eliminate the rabbits. Can't shoot them all. How That's did right. it work? Well, at first it worked great. So within the first year, the virus killed something like 99% of the rabbits. Whoa. Which is, you know, a fairly effective control strategy. And if it would have continued to work that effectively, it probably would have gotten rid of all of the invasive rabbits from Australia. But it sounds like it did not work. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't quite work out as they'd planned. So uh, this is a classic example of, of evolution in real life. So or on a short term and an observable evolution, you could call it. So what happened is that the the virus killed all the rabbits except for those rabbits that were naturally resistant to the, the virus. genetic variations made them resistant. That's right. These were the rabbits that had some existing mutation in their genomes that made them resistant to the viral infection that um, under normal circumstances wouldn't have made much of a difference in their reproductive success, but given this artificial pressure of the virus it's just, killing It's just like antibiotic resistance that's except right. those rabbits that are changing. That's right. And so the rabbits that survived are the rabbits that survived that are the ones that were naturally resistant to the viral infection. So the big question is, did the virus change also? You know, I think it did. Um, I believe that there was evolution of the virus happening at the same time, although I'm not completely familiar with the details yeah. of that. Uh, I think, you know, killing off your host too quickly in that circumstance was right. not the best way to sure. spread. Right. And slowing that down some has been observed by comparing virus samples taken back from 50 years ago with, mm -hmm. with current ones and, yeah. and the like. Yeah. And now people can do the genetics of all of this, which makes it very cool. That's a lot right. of papers on it at ESCB last year. Okay. Yeah, very cool story. Yeah, it is a really cool story. And it's, I mean, it's just a classic example of, you have to be careful um, with all of these you know, attempts at biocontrol that you, you, you know, it's, it's hard to, biology is going to do what biology wants to do. Yeah.